Prince Wilkes, their bands couldn't play it any better. Amen. Thank the Lord for the goodness and the mercies of God Almighty. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Give the Lord a great big praise offering. He's the one who helped you get up, and he's the one who helped you get here today. Amen. We're delighted to have everyone that's joining us this morning here locally and also everyone by live stream that is joining us. But I'm going to ask you, let's stand and let's just give the guest of honor who is none other than God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Would you just welcome him right now? He inhabits the praises of his people. Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 92, verse 10, the latter part of that verse declares, The Lord hath anointed me with fresh oil. With fresh oil. There's a freshness, and there's a freshness in this house today in the name of the Lord. And as we put on the garment of praise for any spirit of heaviness and we lift our voice to the Lord, we know that God's going to touch us together in Jesus' name. If you believe it, would you shout amen? Amen. Let's remain standing if you're able. Come on, worship him this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus.
this morning. Hallelujah. Shake off that heavy load and put on the garment of praise because God is here. He is here for us today. Praise you, Holy Jesus. Can we just lift our hands this morning? Come on, just lift your hands in the house today. Oh, God, we just worship you in this house. You tell us to lift up holy hands before you, oh, God. And as the praises go up, that the Holy Spirit will come down. And we praise you in this house today, Jesus. Praise you, God. Continue to worship him this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Breathe on. 
lift your heart and soul to him right now in the name of the Lord oh Lamb of God we desire more of you oh Lamb of God we declare the report of the Lord that this is the day the Lord hath made and we will rejoice and we will be glad in it in the name of the Lord we're thankful to you Lord for the victory that is ours in Jesus holy name we bless you Lord we praise you in the name of the Lord if you're physically able not trying to wear your patience but would you stand and just lift your hands to God right now and just give him a big praise offering in the name of Jesus my Lord in the name of the Lord in the name of the Lord we bless your holy name we love you Lord we're grateful to you you know you know why we're able to stand and lift our hands to God because of the amazing grace do you know the song Look over to your neighbor and say, just relax and enjoy the presence of the Lord. Oh, yes, Jesus. Just tell them, say, just relax and enjoy the presence of the Lord. How many of you, you're in this house or you're watching by live stream and you just want God to touch you? Oh, yes, Lord. Man, just God to touch. My Lord. Oh, Lord. Start in on the chorus, please. No, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Would y'all lift your hands this morning and say that? Lord, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better than you, Nothing is better than you. First verse. Well, I search the world, but it couldn't feel. Oh. Won't y'all get this start over? Well, I search the world. Feel me. Man's empty praises, treasures that 
Father God, we know this day in the name of the Lord that you turn graves. You literally take graves and turn them into gardens. Lamb of God, you take ashes and you turn them to beauty. You take shame and you turn it to glory. Lord, you even take bones and turn them into an army. 
My Lord and my God, you take the seas and you turn them into highways of blessings. No, Lamb of God, again, you take us and you take a vessel of dishonor and you turn it to a vessel of honor in the name of the Lord. For there's nothing, there is nothing better, nothing better than you, dear Lord. Oh, sing that one more time, please. You, Lord, there's nothing. Just worship him. Better than you, Lord, there's nothing. Better than you, Lord, there's Y'all sing it out. No, there's nothing. Better than you, Lord, there's nothing. Better than you, Lord, there's nothing. Nothing. Just give him a praise offering right now. Would you just put your hands together and make them sound like a timbrel, amen, and like a tambourine in the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, I know that you're already working. Lord God, I know that you're already working. Lord Jesus, I feel you in the house right now. I know that you're touching. I know that you're moving. I know that you're ministering in the name of the Lord. We give you the praise and the glory. I thank you, Lord, for every child. I thank you for every infant. I thank you for every young person. I thank you for every young couple. I thank you for every single adult. I thank you, Lord, for the grandparents. I thank you for the great-grandparents. But most of all, I'm thankful that you're in the house today and we worship you dear lord oh lamb of god we honor you this day in jesus name i want you to declare right now i am healed in jesus name i am healed in jesus name would you declare it again i am healed in Jesus name I'll tell you in a few minutes why I wanted you to do that oh hallelujah you may be seated if you like in the name of the Lord I want you to help me by declaring that you are blessed I want you to declare I am blessed would you do that I am blessed would you declare it again I am blessed. Amen. Now, would you say it? Because you believe it. I am blessed. Oh, hallelujah. John 20 and the C part of verse 29. John 20 and the latter part of verse 29. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. What is the first word? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now, beloved, I realize that we're living in a day and time that inflation is higher than it's been in many, many, many years. Some folks are sitting here today that has never seen inflation as high as it is now. There are many who are paying more for gas than we've ever paid before, paying more for houses and land than we've ever paid before. Medical bills are going up. Grocery bills are going up. 
gasoline bills are going up, but the salaries are dropping or either being maintained. And we wonder when we come to the house of the Lord, how are we going to make it? I declare unto you the word of the Lord today. He declares, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now, beloved, that's powerful. That's powerful for every one of us. Not only is it powerful, but it is insightful. It's informative. It is illuminating to our heart and to our mind in the dialogue with Jesus and with Thomas. Jesus has the last words following the resurrection, and he goes and shows himself to Thomas. And Thomas, you remember as we looked at this verse last week, Thomas said, I will not believe unless I touch the nail print. I will not believe unless I put my hand in his side. I will not believe. I will not believe. I will not believe. But then when the Lord Jesus appeared unto him, Jesus just simply said, Thomas. Beloved, let me tell you, the word of God declares that Jesus is not just the door to the sheepfold, but that Jesus is the shepherd to the sheepfold. And the word of God declares that the sheep of the Lord knows the shepherd's voice. Oh, hallelujah. And when Jesus turned and looked at Thomas and said, Thomas, uh, Thomas said, I no longer have to put my hands upon your hands. I no longer have to put my hands upon your side. I no longer have to feel the brow where the inch and a half plus thorns pierced your head. I I know that you are you because you have spoke to my heart and I know the voice of the Lord. Let me tell you something, beloved. There comes a time in every child of God's life you know when you have received a word. You know the voice of the Lord. You know when the Lord has broken silence. You know when the Lord has become the lily in your valley. You know when the Lord has become your bright and morning star in your midnight. You know when he has has become the fairest of 10,000 and he spoke to you a word in due season and you turned and said Lord and Master well I declare unto you a word that is fitly spoken in due season is like apples of gold and pitchers of silver and I believe the word today for the body of Christ and for anybody and everybody that would dare to believe is John 20 and 29 we are blessed in the name of the Lord. I'm looking at blessed men. I'm looking at blessed women. I'm looking at blessed people. I'm looking at blessed couples. I'm looking at blessed young people and those by live stream that are streaming in. You are blessed in the name of the Lord. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, we are blessed because we're children of the Most High God. We're saved. We're redeemed. We're sanctified. We're spirit filled and beloved it can't do anything but get better and better and better look over to your neighbor and say man that man's talking like a wild man that man's talking like a wild man how can it get better how can it get better how can it get better you know we can't depend upon the polls we can't depend upon politics we can't depend upon government. Amen. That's why the Lord put the church upon planet earth. The church has to stand up and the church has to step up and the church has to declare the report of the Lord. And I declare the report of the Lord that we're blessed going out and we're blessed coming in. That our latter shall be greater than our former. In the name of the Lord, we are blessed children of the most high God. Oh, give him a praise offering in this house right now. Oh, hallelujah. You see, the great teacher, the great Lord Jesus Christ declared to Thomas, pure faith. You say, pure faith. Yes, pure faith. Believing that needs no proof. Yet, pure faith. A belief system that produces the unseen for it is simply faith. The Word of God says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 
Yet the believers utilizing this pure faith, we have a knowing. Can you say amen? We have a knowing faith, a faith that says, I don't know the how. I don't know the when, and I don't know the where, but I just know. Amen. How many of you know, you just know that God's got this. You just know that you're redeemed by the blood, amen. You don't go by your feelings because sometimes you might feel more like a heathen than you do a child of God, amen. But you're saved in the name of the Lord. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the word of God declares when you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. It doesn't matter if you're in the backwoods of North Georgia or if you're in the deep woods of South Georgia or if you're on some island somewhere or if you're in a Holy Ghost meeting on Friday night with freedom on the outside or a Holy Ghost meeting at 11 o'clock service or you're just all by yourself and you start confessing with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ he says thou art saved in the name of the Lord my Lord we don't know the how we don't know the when we don't know the where you just know Simply because God says in Matthew 7 and 7, ask, and then you shall receive. Seek, and you shall knock, and it shall be. What does it? That no, that K-N-O-W, that faith, not knowing the how of it, but we just know. Not knowing the when of it, we just know. Not knowing the where of it, we just know. How many of you know today that God's got his hands on your life? Amen. You know that. You see, God don't put his hands on somebody and withdraw it. Amen. Watch this. The calling and the election of God is well repentance. It is without repentance. God don't change his mind. But I failed. Get up. Amen. Did he, did he not restore Peter? Peter denied him. Did he not restore Peter? Amen. I believe with all of my heart the only reason that he couldn't restore Judas because Judas went out and hung himself. The Lord said, I would above all things that thou would prosper and be in health. But even as thy soul prospers, there's times that we all falter. There's all times we all flounder. But God's calling is still there. And God's repentance is still there. He said, I would above all things that thou would sin not. But if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father through the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, beloved, but there's been a many a times that I had to heed the word of the apostle. Forget those things which are behind me and press on in the name of the Lord. Back behind me is sorrow. Back behind me is disappointment. Back behind me is, disappear, is, is despair. But today I know in whom I have believed because I know so faith in the name of the Lord. Oh, give him a prayers offering. Oh, thank God today. You see, to receive this understanding that we are blessed. Look over to your neighbor and tell him or her, you're blessed. Receive it. I believe with all of my heart God's already touched folks here this morning. Amen. We've had more church here in the last few minutes than some people have in the last year. Amen. I'm not going after an energy, beloved. I want you to feel the anointing. I want you to feel the anointing. The Spirit of the Lord, Jesus declared in Luke 4, 18 and 19. He said, the Lord has anointed me to preach this gospel to the poor. He has sent me. My God, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me to set at liberty those that are held in captivity. He has sent me to recover the sight of the blind. But Brother Moats, I'm bound. Get right with God. Amen. For whom the Son sets free, you're free, and you're free indeed in the name of the Lord. It takes the anointing. I said it takes the anointing. He said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against powers and principalities and powers of darkness of the rulers of this world. That's why things are like they are right now. What are you going to do? Just sit, soak, and sour? I don't know about you, 
but I'm going to put on my garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Amen. It gets heavy. I said, I'm going to put on my garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Heaviness. She was so heavy burdened. She was so heavy laden. She had suffered 12 long years. But Marie, she said, if I can just touch him, I don't even feel like I can shake his hand. I don't even feel like I've got strength enough for him to anoint my head. But if I can just touch him, I know I shall be made whole. My Lord, when you get in the presence of Emmanuel, when you get in the presence of God with us, when you get in the presence of the anointed, when you get into the presence of the word, you're healed in the name name of the Lord. My Lord, he said, who touched me? He said, who touched me? Who touched me? And the disciples wanted to rebuke him. My, 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 isn't it something how church folk get in God's way? Isn't it something how self-righteous people say, well, I'm not. Jesus just simply asked a question, who touched me? And all of a sudden, you know, the devil don't like it when you get touched. <laughs> the devil don't like it when you get right with God. The devil don't like it when you're redeemed. The devil doesn't like it when you're healed in the name of the Lord. He wants to put things in your mind. Oh, what about that pain? Oh, what about this? Oh, what about what you just said? Oh, how about how you just acted? I told him one day, I said, how about the way I just acted? How about the way I feel? I live by faith. I don't go by what I see. I go by what I know. And I know the voice of the Lord and the voice of the Lord has spoken and says I'm healed I'm free I'm redeemed in the name of the Lord my Lord you got to get it in your heart I'm blessed Lord I hear your Holy Spirit again he said blessed are those who have not seen but you believe He lost it all. He lost his family. He lost his wealth. He lost his real estate. He lost his livelihood. He lost his health. He had one of those, God, why is this happening to me? You ever been there? God, th this is my family, you know. You ever had the thought, it's not supposed to be like this? You know, the scripture said that Job was a man who feared God. Job was a man who loved God. Look over to your neighbor and say, for whatever you're going through and whatever ills you, I-L-L, -L, ills you, the Lord knows he can trust you. You get it? My Lord, I just saw the Holy Spirit just do a bizwhacker. It's not supposed to be like this. <laughs> I had a couple tell me the other day, they said that they knew that God had put them together. And this couple told me, said that every marriage counselor that they went to, said every marriage counselor told them, said, you better not, you better not, you better not. How many times has the devil put in our heart, you better not, you better not believe, Oh, you, that's not real. Oh, that's not right. No, you, and you question this, you question that. If that couple had listened to all of those naysayers, and let me tell you something about those naysayers. Every one of them that was marriage counselors ended in a divorce. And, and, and the couple that went ahead and got married fixed to celebrate 25 years of marriage. Give the Lord a praise offering. Amen. You see, you've got to know. And when you know that you know that you know. You see, oh, hallelujah, the Lord said through his scripture, he said there comes a time you've got to pull down those strongholds that get in here and you've got to bring them into the captivity to the capture of the Holy Spirit of the living God because this is spiritual warfare, beloved. You're free in the name of the Lord. You're blessed in the name of the Lord. And Jesus Christ is coming you got to be like Job. Job lost it all, and yet by sheer faith, when his wife told him, why don't you just curse God and die, he had a choice. 
Help me right now and say, it's a choice. Amen. Look over to your neighbor and help them say, it's a choice. You know what he chose? She said, why don't you curse God and die? And Job turned around, and he chose to praise God and live. <laughs> because he declared, sister, those skin worms eat up my flesh. Though the parasites that every human being has housed within them, you can take the vitamins, you can take the D and the C and everything else. But, beloved, the Scripture is true. The dust goes back to the dust and the ash goes back to the ash, and we're nothing but mere mud people without the breath of God upon our life. And Job declared, Though skin worms eat my flesh, yet I shall see him as he is oh hallelujah let come what may hell or high water but I'm not backing down I'm not turning around I'm not giving up I'm not going in reverse I hear the power of the Holy Spirit in Acts 1 and 8 but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you you shall receive power power wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb of God. My Lord, give him a praise offering. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, the enemy tries to get us to look at our bank account. Someone said the other day, said, it's talking about that blessed young man that bought some kind of social media thing. <laughs> you know. <laughs> He's sitting there, and this fella I was having coffee with. Imagine that, me drinking coffee. Come on. He's talking about what he had. I looked at him, and I said, the Happy Goodman's wrote a song about me. <laughs> Some of you are already laughing and smiling. Though you see it really happened to me, I'm a millionaire. <laughs> And the chorus goes on. It says, I'm a poor, poor, rich man. Oh, I'm a poor, poor, rich man. Oh, you see, it really happened to me. I'm a millionaire. My Lord, amen. You see, beloved, you can't allow the devil to pull you down because the best that the world has to offer, pure gold, we're going to be walking on it in glory. My Lord, the gates, oh, my Lord, the world. Walls, earth's finest is junkyard. Look over to you. Did you know you drove up here in junk today? I got one more payment, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. <laughs> one more. <laughs> See, life is real. The enemy will have you judging your life by your material. He'll have you judging your life by your finances. He'll have it judging your life by how you feel. He'll have you judging your life by someone else. Let's just look at everyone. And understand that we all complement each other. We're brothers and sisters in the household of faith. Amen? Look over to your neighbor and say, hey, I appreciate you. Take me for a real buy. I'll take you for a cup of coffee. <laughs> I appreciate you. See? We get to thinking it's all about the Smiths and the Joneses and that church and this church and the other church. Honey, there's not but one church. These are buildings. In my last pastorate, I tore down the church because they had created a brand new beautiful sanctuary 
largest seating sanctuary in Polk County. Beautiful. Then we went in and built office spaces and other things that they needed. And God blessed us the whole however many long years we were there. And this woman came up one day and she knocked on the glass doors. I like glass. I like let light in. Amen. She knocked on the glass door. Secretary said, Pastor, someone's there. I said, let the youth pastor go. He said, he stepped out. I said, he must have seen her come. Oh, my. <laughs> Woo! Let me get back up here. <laughs> she said, I have never. I said, you've never what? Because I sense that spirit. I don't tolerate that junk from a so-called credentialed or anyone else. All they want to do is batter the family of God. I ain't going to let nobody talk about you. Amen. It's wrong. It's wrong in the name of the Lord. Amen. I had one many, many years ago. I walked in and he followed me. I felt that old spirit. He got all, and I got about right there. And I said, good morning, brother. Now, this was when I was younger in pastoral work. I don't know that I'd have said it quite like this. He said, I don't like your hair. And I looked at him with his beautiful hair, thick. I said, I don't care for your tongue. Because there's life and death in the tongue. I stepped up on that platform. I looked at the associate pastor. I said, something wrong with my hair? Sonny, the minister of music, was sitting over here. He was fixing to, he was fixing to direct the music. And I went over to him. I said, Sonny, something wrong with That's as good as the devil wanted. You know what I do now when I come into the house of the Lord? <laughs> I just come in and say, morning, morning, <laughs> morning, because I've got one goal, and that's to feed the word of the living God. We don't have time for stumps and humps and bumps and valleys. We've got to hear the word of the living God. We speak life in the name of the Lord. He said there's power to live, and there's power to kill. Oh, God, and the Lord is saying to us today that there's power. I'm telling you through my word. Blessed are you when you have not seen and yet you still believe. Honey, I've never been to heaven, but I still believe. I've never seen a gate of pearl, but I still believe. I've never had much more gold than what's on my finger, but I still believe. Woo! Ah, Lord. Sister Joe, when we get there, those angels are going to have to peel left and right. For here comes the bride. Amen. Donna and I have had some honors bestowed upon us uh, through the years of ministry. And I remember we went to Cleveland and they were honoring us one time. And, and uh, they said, would you come this way? Would you come this way? And, and people just sort of look, you know. And, I said, and I'd look when they'd look at me like that. I'd say, I don't know. I'm just doing what he says. When we get to the heaven, anybody going? You going to heaven? Pastor, do you really believe it? I'm getting there. The Spirit of God is pushing me to Jeremiah 29 and 11. On that resurrection morning when all the dead in Christ shall rise, I'll have a new body. Praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. <laughs> no more trying to get up the steps. No more trying to get out of the recliner. <laughs> Amen. No more. <laughs> Woo. 
No more. My Lord, I feel his anointing. The Lord said, you're hitting the nails on all four corners. My Lord, no more wrestling in the doubt of your mind. Am I ready? Am I right with God? Am I spirit filled? I told the devil one day, I said, you better know that I know that I'm spirit filled because you're nothing but a liar. And all you've done is tell me all day long, you're not saved. You're not right. You're, you're just uh, not filled with the Holy Ghost you're not healed and I said I know that I'm right for the word of God declares that he's a liar and the father of every lie and comes out of the pits of hell my Lord you gotta stand up and declare the word of the Lord my Lord when we get there that day that morning that noon that night amen Papa Lamar's gonna be there can you, can you just imagine, Tina, what your daddy's been doing? Someone asked me the other day, he said, he's one, of the, he's one of the ministers here on the district. He said, I wonder what my dad's doing. His dad and my dad was in ministry together. I said, well, I tell you right now, I can tell you what my dad's doing. I said, he's over there somewhere trying to find him a cup of coffee. <laughs> and I said, him and your daddy's done sat down and got some kind of a coffee cup. <laughs> and I said, they ain't just talking it over in the by and by. I could see my dad who preached this gospel of 66 years. Uh, he would preach it before the hairspray came out until it was all down in his face. Uh, and he was under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and after the hairspray came out and everybody stopped going to the barber shop and started going to the beauty shop and they quit going to the barber and started going to the beautician. I'd see him get up and still preach under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I told my brother the other day, I said, they're still under the anointing for the glory of God abounds in heaven. Oh, Lord. Yes, Holy Ghost. All right. Yes, Lord. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Forget the rest of it. I know. I know the plans that I have for you. You hear me? Turn to Jeremiah 29 and 11. Let's read it out loud on the count of three. If you don't have it on your phone, you don't have it on your watch, you don't have it in leather bound, hardback, look at the screen. On the count of three, one, two, three, read it. Do we not know English? Read out loud. One, two, three. For I know the plans. Oh, I, I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't know he didn't have it up there. <laughs> Can you get it up there? I apologize. You still going to take me for that ribeye? <laughs> Bologna sandwich. It's almost as high. Jeremiah 29 and 11. You there? Jeremiah, read it out. I know the plans. In the King James, it says thoughts. I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Plans of what? Peace. Where are you living at? We're living in hell, Pastor. My world's upside down. I do all right for the hour and 10 or 20 minutes I'm here. But when I leave here, I get the shakes. I get on the job and I get the shakes. I lay down at night and I wonder, dear God, how am I going to make it? And I break out with a fever. My Lord, is it real? Notice he said, plans of peace and not evil. Look over to your neighbor and say, no, it's not evil. Go ahead and tell them it's not evil. It's not evil. He says, not of evil. To give you an expected end. Now that simply means, and to give you a hope and a future. A dear soldier and a beloved friend of Donna and I, Sister Jackie Walker, went home just the other morning to be with the Lord. Brother Don Walker and Sister Jackie was our state overseer for a number of years here in North Georgia. 
a woman who smiled, a woman who loved, and a woman who was real. I love real people, don't you? Hey Amen, honey, if you get me in Bill Goveralls or get me in a black suit with a pretty tie, almost as pretty as Sam's, I am what I am. But Lee, as we walked by her body yesterday at North Cleveland, still a pretty woman. And it was like she said to me, Oh, Brother John, I'm not here. <laughs> For to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Plans that God fulfilled in her life to give her an expected end that on that morning when she slumped in death, she was gone to be with the Lord. Donna and I walked to Brother Walker and we embraced. And he looked at Donna as he took her little hand and he said, well, honey, the party's almost over. <laughs> the devil may be trying to have a heyday in your life. He may be celebrating, oh, hallelujah your troubles and your trials and your tribulations. But may I take you back to two weeks ago when this choir sang, we did not celebrate somebody who was still in a borrowed tomb. Amen. But we celebrated our Lord and Savior who rose victoriously over death and over hell and over the grave. And I'm here to tell you today, beloved, the devil might be celebrating your troubles and your trials and your afflictions. And I want you to hear the word of the Lord. There's going to be a resurrection. There's going to be a resurrection. Go to 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Amen. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Verses 16, 17, and 18. You got to see this before you leave here today. Lord, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Brother Motes, is that just a church thing? No. I said in restaurants, hey amen, I said in a restaurant the other day, can you believe in Alabama? I felt the Holy Ghost just start witnessing. Whew. Notice what he says. You got to get this. Look to your neighbor and say, get this in your spirit. Look over there and tell him. Get this in your spirit. Hey amen. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, for we do, we do not lose heart. We do not faint. We do not pass out. We do not give up is what it means in the original Greek. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Do you see it? Here it is. For we do not look at the things which are seen, but we look at the things which are not seen. Blessed are you who believe and you have not seen. <laughs> you're sitting here this morning and you're mourning. You feel full of shame. You feel as though you're ready for the grave. But faith says, faith turns mourning to dancing. Faith turns ashes into beauty. 
Faith turns shame into glory. Faith takes bones and makes an army. Faith turns the sea of life into a highway of blessings. And faith takes the grave and turns it into a garden. What has God said to you? My Lord, hear me young and old. Hear me today. God spoke to me, my Lord, all week. All week. And he said, take them back to Jeremiah 29 and 11. And he said, my spirit's going to sit upon them like fire. He said, it's going to burn in their bones because they're going to receive it. He said, tell them that not only is my calling and election sure, I don't change my mind because of this and that and the other. He said, but tell them, I know the plans that I have for you. I've got plans of peace and they're not evil. And I've got plans to bless you and to prosper you and they're not evil. I've got plans to give you a hope and to give you a future and they're not evil. My Lord, oh, hallelujah. Would you stand all in this house? Would you give him a praise? Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. there's nothing nothing precious wife of 60 plus years quick amen brother join me come here brother hallelujah in the name of the lord Erling. come here sister in the name of jesus hallelujah come on hallelujah just form a line across here face face me face me amen amen just form a line form a line form a line get right beside her get right beside her oh hallelujah god spoke to me about you God spoke to me, my Lord and my God, my Lord, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, my Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, come on, young man, grab that beautiful wife beside you, in the name of Jesus, glory be to God, hallelujah, in the name of the Lord, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing, my Lord, my Lord, you know, I didn't know, you know, it's like I was preaching. I don't know the how, I don't know the when, I don't know the what. 46 years, I just flowed with the Spirit. We used to try to figure out, God, what do you want in this service? God, how do you want us to handle this service? God spoke to me a long time ago. He said, I want you first out of the way. And he said, if you'll get out of the way, I'll work. Amen. But God spoke to me about you this week. And I only met you at Grandmama's funeral when we saluted that woman of faith. (laughs) 
God spoke to me about all of you, every one of you. God spoke to me about both of you. I had no idea you were coming this morning. I walked into that because I couldn't be there Friday. And there's a lot of times, Pastor, I can't be where I want to be because my time's not my own. But when I looked at those drums, God said, he's coming. Just get ready. Speak to him. This week, my Lord and my God, God, God said to tell every one of you, Jeremiah 29 and 11, God's got plans for you. Just stay. Just stay still. Be steady. God's got plans for you. Don't always be what you think it might be. God's got plans for you. Just get on like you do them jet, that water ski. Just enjoy. Just watch it. Just that jet ski. Just water. My, my brother. <laughs> it ain't over. <laughs> Woo! Lord, when the old enemy comes in like a flood, amen, and the doctors tell you this, and the doctors tell you that, and they're just some good tech trying to do what they're trying to do because they just graduated. But God said, believe the report of the Lord. <laughs> believe the report of the Lord. Believe the report of the Lord. Believe the report of the Lord. My Lord and my God, he said, tell him, that the work that I've started in him, I will bring it to pass. Stay on the altar. Keep yourself under the altar. Keep yourself in the word. God loves you unconditionally. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you when you don't love yourself. He loves you when you despise yourself. He loves you when you disappoint yourself. He loves you. Oh, hallelujah, Father God, in the name of Jesus, ah, Lord, and my my God, from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, out of his belly shall flow rivers. against the doubt, a standard against the fear. Nothing is better than you. Oh, God's blessed you and he's going to touch you. I want to encourage you. I want you to pray together. Once a day. Not at breakfast when she's on her way to the bank. Get that together. Look over at her and say, you're the best looking woman in my life. I want you to look at him and say, you my man. I want you to say, Lord, here am I. Tell him. Let it go. Let it go. Take the brakes off. Say, Lord, here am I. Father God. <laughs> He couldn't feel me in the name of Jesus. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade on every night. Enjoy your life with Jesus. Then you came along. Put me back together. And every
your mercy and grace won't find me again. Lift your hands and give him a praise oh, offering. Let's celebrate what God's doing in all of our lives. Now listen, take the Word of God. Take the Word of God. Christian, take the Word of God. My Lord, Alfonso, take the Word of God. <laughs> Joy, take the Word of God. My Lord, this is a bump in the road. The devil is a liar. And in the name of the Lord, continue to intercede. In the name of the Lord, hey, continue to do the work of ministry. Hey, in the name of Jesus, hooray. Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. Glory. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to shout, I believe the report of the Lord. I believe the report of the Lord. Would you shout it again? I believe the report of the Lord. Do you? Listen. God said, bring all your tithes and offerings into the storehouse of the Lord. Prove me. Prove me. As the ushers, just stay, just stay right here with me. Just stay right here with me. I like hanging with good people. Folks, we didn't get off the bus last night. We know. We just have to be reminded of the Word. Don't be stingy and God will bless you. The men are there. And as you give unto the Lord, God said, I'll give it right back to you. Someone told me the other day they blessed somebody and said before they got out of the steakhouse, somebody bought their meal. And that's something. You never know how it's going to come back. But the scripture said, cast your bread upon the water, and after many days it will come again. Amen. Don't be stingy. Just give unto the Lord. Has God blessed you today? Yes. God bless you. Today. Oh, hallelujah. Just shout, amen. Yes. In Jesus' name, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Uh,